Hello, I'm Nathan Reynolds and I'm here to help you do something that it should have an app for, but I can't find one. Um, all the apps that let you add text to pictures want you to use the picture as the background for the text. And so I've been looking all day long on YouTube and various other places, of course in my iPhone app store, looking for apps that would add a little section at the bottom of a picture and let you add a caption to it. I see a lot of people looking for this online, but uh, it doesn't seem like anybody has created the app. So if you want to make a lot of money and you know how to create apps, I would suggest this would be a great tool that people are looking for, including myself, that does not seem to exist. Um, but here is the picture uh, and the caption uh, example that I want to show you how to do. The tools you're going to need. Uh, to do this, let's say uh, you're like me and you have inherited your family's photo albums and your, your parents maybe have passed away like mine have, and I'm um, trying to distribute the photos to everybody in the family and this goes to extended family and uh, some of them are not familiar enough with my mom and dad to understand what they're looking at when they see the pictures. They know it's my mom and dad at a younger age and then sometimes there's people in the picture they don't know who it is and they don't have any idea what the location is and they don't know a lot of things about the picture and of course all the apps and software that are made for these things they want you to fill in text fields and add captions and keywords and so forth and all of that works fine if you have the software uh, that you're using to do it but if you send it to family all they get is the photo and they don't know how to access those kind of things and it's too complicated so we need it the old-fashioned way that's that is right on the front of the photo a lot of times my mom used to write this information on the back of her photos and that's where I get a lot of the details I'm looking for so I'm gonna just run down how I handled this problem and solved it today um, I'll, I guess we'll start with uh, the iPhone. Um, <clears throat> there's two programs you need on an iPhone and you can use this on either an iPhone or an Android. Um, Google Photos is one of them and you need an account on Google and then you need the PhotoScan. This here PhotoScan is a Google app. It is fantastic. Uh, if you Google this online you'll see this is the best photo scanning app uh, that there is right now today in 2017. Uh, this app is fantastic because it does such a great job of cropping the photo, of making sure there's no glare on the photo, and it is just great. Uh, it's so easy to use. And so today I did 71 pictures, and I scanned it with PhotoScan and, and then imported it, saved them into my Google Photos. And the reason for that is, is I want to get them off my phone into or onto the Google Drive and once I got it from Google Photos up to the internet, I was able to bring them back down and load them into my Google Drive on my computer. And that's when I turned to Adobe Bridge. Adobe Bridge is a free program from Adobe, uh, especially if you use, I think it's free to everybody, but if you have Photoshop Elements or Photoshop CC, uh, which I have, um, it is a great program to organize your photos. And so I got them all sitting in Google Drive. And as you can see here on the folder side here, I have my Google Photos. Well, when I brought them in, I just put them in my Google Photos. And then I went in and I selected them. I went all the way down and there was more and more pictures, but I found the last one of these that I did today. And I selected it by holding shift. So you click on, you can click on the photo, the final photo that you want, go back to the top, hit shift, click, I'm on a PC, by the way, uh, but same thing works on a Mac. And uh, that selects all the photos that I want to add captions to and I want to manipulate. And once you do that, then you go up here to Tools. This is in Adobe Bridge. And you choose uh, Batch Rename. And this is going to let you take the, the arcane number that uh, Google Photos and this PhotoScan app adds to the name and put a name that you like. So what happens here is you can rename all your photos uh, by going in here and just selecting the things that you want. I wanted it to have text that said my mom and dad on it and then I wanted to have a sequence number and what I did was chose number one. Now it says 72 because I already did it 
but I would choose number one here and then have two digits so it would put in two digits. Another thing to do is to add a uh, either a space or a space and a dash and another space so that it won't end up looking like mine did. If you look right here, it says Nathan's mom and dad, which is what got this from right here. But I forgot the space and the dash, so it says 05 and 09s and so forth. So you can uh, help yourself by not making that mistake. When you open this the first time, there's four actual categories on the page and so what you've got to do is just ignore what you see on the screen and choose text put the text in that gives you a hint as to what the pictures are grouped as and then a sequence number so that each one will have a different unique name by the number at the end and then these two fields here no matter what they say when you open it just hit the minus key like that and that's all you need text and the sequence numbers and that will do it hit rename and all your photos will be renamed right where they are if you don't want them to be uh, renamed in the folder that you have them in you want to move them to their own folder then you can click move to the old move to uh, other folder and hit browse and point out the folder that you want them in and i'm going to hit cancel because i've already done this and i don't need to do it again um so we know what we want so we're going to select a photo that is going to be um whoops since everything's selected it's warning me i'm going to open all 72 fo photos so i'm going to select this photo here and as you can see it's cropped uh it doesn't have uh, any space down here for the text and this is exactly what we need to do in Photoshop. This is Photoshop CC. You can also do this in Photoshop Premiere, which is the inexpensive version of Photoshop. And uh, it's all done pretty much the same way. The menus may be in a little different place, but otherwise it's the same thing. So you go to image, and in image it'll let you do a canvas size uh, change. Uh, uh, canvas size is what the background size is that this picture is sitting on and what we want to do is we want to increase the size of the canvas so that we can have room for text without writing over the top of our photo so we're going to choose canvas size and once you do this uh, and you find it in your menu you will see that it has a shortcut key called alt Control c and that's easier than going through the menu section now here's your canvas. Your canvas, uh, this one in particular, is 27 inches by 41 inches and, and change. What we want is we want to add size down here only at the bottom. And to do that means we're going to click here to turn off the top so it doesn't add anything to the top and it will only add to the bottom. All of a sudden my mouse is slowing down. so. It looks like maybe my uh, mouse battery is starting to go. So this, is, this could get interesting. The other thing I want to point out um, is that you want to make sure your canvas is white because you likely are going to want to put black print on white background. And so you need to choose white here. And if you open this up, uh, you can do white, black, gray, or other. And of course, we're talking about the background cover uh, uh, color. So uh, the reason we do not uh, choose to leave this all open is because of this. I want to add to the height, not the width. In other words, I don't want any more room on the sides. I want room that is in the height area, but I don't want it at the top. So because I don't want it at the top, I'm closing the top by clicking there. And there, therefore, everything I add will only go down on the canvas size and give me room at the bottom, not at the top. And if you don't follow me, just hang in there and you'll see what I'm talking about here in a moment. I'm going to percentages on this because I don't know the exact amount I want at the bottom in terms of inches, but I do know I need about 15 more percent than I have. So I need to add 15% to what is 100%. So that would be 115, right? So that's going to give me an additional 15% at the bottom of my picture. And so if I choose that to be on the height, 
Now, if I put 115 on the width, it would also add on both sides of the picture, uh, 15 more percent would be seven and a half on each side. But we don't want that. We want the picture to stay just like it is in, in that respect. Um, now, thinking of that, I just realized this picture does have a border on top and bottom and not the sides. So in this case, I actually am going to add a little bit on the sides because I just noticed that and it will look better and more uniform. So I'm going to do 105% on the width and 115. What I'm hoping that gives me is 2.5% on this side, 2.5% on this side, nothing on the top because it already has a border, and then on the bottom it's going to go down like this. Let's see if that happens. Bingo, look at that. Our picture is now uniform. That is beautiful. So now we have room for text. To do text, you just go over here and you click on the T on the side here, and you don't even have to click there. If you want to just hit T, it will give you a text icon. And you go down here to your text area and draw a little horizontal box and make it to where it's not right up to the edge. You don't want your text to hit edges at all and then you're set. Now you can type text into the bottom of the box. What we do there next is go up here. Here's all the text details that you want to make sure are proper. Mine are all set up because I've already done this a couple of times tonight. So I've got the kind of font I want, the Arial rounded font, and uh, you can use any font on your computer there that's uh, in that list. Um, that's the one I like. And then uh, here, regular, I could choose bold. Um, I don't want to choose bold, but I could choose it if it was available. It's not available, so regular is all I'm going to get. 99 points. Now that sounds crazy. If you were in Microsoft Word, you would not want 99 points. I don't know why it requires it to be so large in Photoshop. You might find yours differently. I didn't, I'm a little baffled by that number, but nevertheless, that's the number that I need for this particular picture. And Sharp's good. I want it to be centered. I want it to start in the middle, in other words, and not on the left where it would be over here on this side. If you were going to uh, do a paragraph, like a lot of information, and make this box a little bigger, maybe you made it 120% instead of 115%, um, then you might want to do a fill or, or a left uh, or a right uh, paragraph type of uh, uh, margin. But in my case, I'm just getting information like, what year this was taken, uh, what town it was in, what city, what state, and uh, that kind of information, Who who's in the picture. And so that's all I need. I need three lines basically is, uh, is the point. So let's see if we can do this real quick. I've got my mom first, me in the middle, and dad, okay? And <clears throat> let's see. <coughs> Excuse me. The gear. My throat got dry. The year was 1964. And the place, National City. <coughs> Now, look at that. We have a nice text box. I clicked off of it, by the way, uh, to get rid of the boundaries. Click back on it, and you can get it back. Um, if, if any of this is not the right size for you, click in there, hit Control A, and then you can go up here and change anything up here, and it will affected immediately you'll see it affected here so if your font was too big you can you can just click in here and make it what you want it to be you could reduce it by 10 points increase it by 10 points or you can click on the t's here and just just pull to the right or the left with your left mouse button pressed and it will make it bigger or smaller as you pull left or right uh, let's see um, now, in Photoshop, you probably know this if you work in Photoshop, that there's layers that start happening when you start adding things to a photo. Now we have the background layer, which is the picture, the original picture and the canvas. And then we have the text layer, which is a layer of its own. 
And right now, if I hit save, it's gonna save it as a Photoshop file, not the original file that I want it to save as. In other words, the whole goal here is I want this photo to be married to this data. I want it all to be like this when people look at it. And they can go back and crop this photo if they want to use it or print it and they don't want the caption. The caption's extra and all they have to do is crop it and leave the caption off and then they can save it without my caption. Um, so therefore, no, nobody loses in this situation and everybody wins because a lot of people won't know what year this was because they weren't around at this time. There are family members that were born in the 80s or 90s, so they wouldn't even be able to figure it out. Um, but I need to go over here to these layers and click on one of these, either one, and then go to this menu here. And it's a little different in Photoshop Elements, but it's the same concept. You want to right click uh, in Photoshop Elements right here and you'll get this menu. But in Photoshop, you don't right click. You click on the menu or left click and then go to Flatten Image. All right. Now you can see the two layers are now one layer and therefore this is a simple one layer uh, photo once again and because of that because i took care of that problem now i can hit save which is Control s or just go up here in the menu and hit save right here and immediately it's going to save the, the photo right over the top of what it was before without the caption and in this case, I don't need to change anything here because this photo was scanned by my camera and it is already going to save at the highest level that it needs to, which is a medium quality at seven. And if I wanted it higher quality, I would just move this as far to the right as I want. Or if I wanted a lower quality, lesser amount of space taken up on my computer, this one's going to be 371. Um, so that's how big that photo is going to be and you can move this and this will change accordingly if you're trying to get like under certain limits um, if we need this under one megabyte then we're good because we only have 371k here uh, so we don't have to worry about it i'm gonna hit okay and voila now this is a photo the photo that i had before we'll look in uh, bridge and i'll show you uh, this photo here's the one we were working off of now it has the caption so now because it is in the Google Drive it's in a shared folder with my family which I have many different people who are sharing this folder so they can get to these photos now when they flip through them they're gonna have a lot more meaning to them because they're gonna be able to assess by the date and the, or the year and where it was taken and who's in the photo kind of what was going on in my mom and dad's life at that time I hope this has been helpful. If so, give me a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching.